The Sixers are extremely deep at the wing position. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode is sponsored by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Hi, my name is Keith Pompey, and this is my right hand, John Mitchell. We are the co-hosts of Locked On Seventy Sixers. As you know, this week we're breaking down the positions, and today, Tuesday. We're talking about the wing position. And what we're doing is we're lumping the two guards and the small forwards together because really they're really interchangeable in this offense and kind of interchangeable in today's NBA. And John, if you look at this, this Mm -hmm. position in particular, they only really have one guy coming back, one guy coming back from last year. And the reason I said really one guy is because K.J. Martin is listed as a small forward, but he plays a lot of power forward. He's really an undersized forward in the NBA. He's 6'6". Six, yeah. six. So that one guy who's coming back is Kelly Oubre Jr., right? Mm-hmm. The only guy coming back. But when you look at it, in this particular offense, you know, you say Paul George, nine-time All-Star, right? Mm-hmm. The best free agent acquisition. Caleb Martin, right? Then you have now, and then you have uh, Kelly Oubre. Now, one of those three are going to have to line up at power forward in this offense. But realistically, they're going to have Joel Embiid, three wings, and and Tyrese Maxey at the point guard. That's how their offense is going to be. So although people might say power forward, they just got three wings. But then coming off the bench, Jared McCain a point guard in college, but he's going to be more of a two guard, at least this season for the Sixers. Mm -hmm. Then you have Eric Gordon, a sharp shooting veteran, right? Then you have um, Ricky Council IV, an athletic second year guy, right? So when you look at this team, man, it's extremely deep. And I'm not even including Justin Edwards, the two-way guy, from Kentucky who played his high school ball at M.O. Charter. Mitch, this is an extremely deep and exciting group. And I I think that this is going to be one of the 76ers strengths offensively. No, I agree with you. It's not just knee deep. They are totally deep at the small forward to dig into my bag bag of tricks with Parliament Funkadelic. Yeah, I think that if you, if you look at it, man, um, and like you said, the only guy coming back with a significant amount of experience playing that position for the 76ers, you know, you have Kelly Uber who played a lot of it last year. Um, but they're new, but they are indeed deeper. You know, by adding Paul George, you know, that, that bumps everybody back and it gives them, you know, a nine-time all-star guy who's forging it or has already forged a Hall of, Hall of Fame career. You know, the um, some of the older guys get into the mix. Eric Gordon, but you know, I, I like what he can do in spurts. Um, you know, Ricky Council was a guy we fall in love with every summer, and he did look improved this summer. So, you know, and you add a guy like Caleb Martin, who you know will, will probably start at that power forward spot, but he's really you know a six five, six six max wing for them. So um, yeah, this is, you know, we, we talked about the point guard position and how deep it is, you know, the solid one, two, three with Tyrese, Kyle Lowry and Reggie Jackson, but this is also a very, very, very deep spot for them, you know? Um, and when you step back and you look at the roster, I mean, just looking at, look at Paul George and Kelly Uber at the top of it, then you have a lot of athletic guys. You have versatility, you have the shooter and the young boy, Jared McCain. So, 
Yeah, it's a, it's it's an impressive lineup of wings, man. You know, and they can do a lot of things. They can extend defensively because of the length of guys like Paul George, and to you know to a degree Kelly Oubre, who's a long six five six six. So, I like it, man. I, I, I yeah. do like it. I mean, the thing is, the question though is, how do you feel about you know the three of them now? When you talk to Nick Nurse. And, you know, you say, OK, you got uh, Caleb Martin. I asked him a, a month ago, a couple months ago. I said, now, is the starters going to be your wings? Is it definitely going to be Paul George, Caleb Martin and Kelly Oubre? And he says at that particular time, he says, oh, I don't know right now. He said, but the one thing is all three of them are interchangeable in mm -hmm. those wing spots. And that's good. Now, the, if there's a downside from it you look at it, they do lose some size if they go up against a bigger team, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they do that. Now, the thing is, when you look at Paul George, because of he's getting older, if you go to his, his page, a lot of times, or his uh, basketball reference page, you know, he's listed as a 3-4, right? Because yeah. at times they go small ball and he's playing, you know, power forward. Now, the thing about it is a lot of people are saying, the six foot five Caleb Martin is going to be the five. I mean the four. four. Um, so to me, if there's a weakness on it, it's on the defensive end. How are they going to guard? The problem is like if you have a, a towering power forward, a brute strong guy, mm -hmm. I understand that Paul George is one of the best defenders, but I don't see him shutting down a bigger guy like that. Nor do I see Kelly Oubre doing it, nor do I see um you know, Caleb Martin doing it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, when we look at this now, you know, the great part is, you know, as, as you, you got a guy like uh, Paul George, who we talked about nine-time All-Star, six-time All-NBA, he can take some pressure off of Maxi, who's a point yeah. guard. He can also yeah. be an elite defender, elite two-way player. The same thing about Kelly and him. Kelly really bored in and defending this year. And he did great. Caleb, uh, Caleb Martin, you got him. He's the Boston Celtics stopper. So when you look at all this, offensively is good. It's just the major question mark is what are they going to do on the defensive end? Against yeah, the yeah, yeah. And, and and you did touch on something very interesting. You know, we we know that um, like like, like offense is going to be hell on people. You know, with. I mean, we, we've seen Joel Embiid initiate the offense, but talking about the wings, you know that you'll see, you will see Paul George, you know, floating around at the point at, at times. And just to have that versatility, a guy who can be a, a small four, small ball uh, four, it's, it's, it's just going to give them an exceptional amount of, uh, of diversity at that, um, you know, among their wings. And we can talk about that a little bit more after we get back from the break. But right now, I just want to talk to you folks about the great game time. Um, listen, you can get to with game time. It's, you can get uh, go see sports. You can see music, the theater. You can attend everything you want. And it's all you have to do is go to the game time, which has a new feature. And it's called game time picks. And it makes getting tickets for your favorite live event even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. You know, and they've got the super deal. And, and you know, you can use the app features and you can customize your spot. You can get curated deals, make it easier to find the best price on great seats. You can get the super deal. You can get seat views before you buy and the lowest price guarantee with event cancellation protection and job loss protection, et cetera. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. And use code locked on NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. We want to thank you. 
for making Locked on Sixers your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked on NBA podcast. There is no offseason in the NBA, and Locked on NBA provides only basketball analysis from national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Locked on NBA. Available on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Every single day. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. But you know what? Here's the thing. You know, we know about the, we, we talked in nauseam about the, you know, the three guys that we just got done talking about. Martin, mm-hmm. um, you know, Ubre and and, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, people could re- recite some of the things we said. But, you know, the guys that I really, you know, I really am interested in seeing, you know, what he's going to do is um, Ricky Council, the fourth, right? You know, Ricky mm-hmm. Council is a guy, young dude, who's been working on his game. You know, last year he was one of the hardest workers in the gym. You really didn't get to see him a lot because you know he he only played in he he played in well he played in 32 games but a lot of it was like mop up duty and then when he did play though at certain times like he did make some things happen in certain games you know a prime example you know he uh, he he finished with a uh, against the Washington Whip Wizards on. On February 10th, he finished with 19 points on 7 for 13 shooting. But he also had – that was a career high. He also had a career high 10 rebounds in that game, right? Yeah. So that was his best game. And then when they played at San Antonio on April the 7th, you know, he was a part of that comeback that they had where he had um, 11 points. He had a career high four steals, right? He had three assists, and one of his assists was like actually one of the best plays of the game when he did that around the back looper to from the um, corner to from the, the corner. corner, yeah, to Nico yeah. Batum for that three, right? You know, he played twenty two minutes and was a two, plus seven. He was four for five in in the in shooting the ball. He played all in the second half, so. This is a guy that I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to do and how Nick Nurse is going to incorporate him. Now, again, they didn't have Caleb Martin last year, nor did they have a Paul George type of guy. But I'm really interested in see how the 76ers use him and see how he, he has progressed. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Keith. I mean, um, you know, we, we, we keep looking for guys who are develop, de- developmental who we want to see, you know. Um, I mean, we, we, we had the ultimate developmental guy, although he was uh, on steroids, and Tyrese Maxey, who went from, you know, a uh, 20-something pick in the draft to a guy who's an all-star in next to no time. A guy like Ricky Council is obviously nowhere near the talent level to say, um, you know, uh, the Tyrese is, but he's a guy, he's he – all the things you talked about, you know, the ability to fit seamlessly in the offense and in defense. He shoots the ball pretty well from the three, too. You know, 37. He didn't take a lot of them. But when he does shoot it, he shoots pretty with, with, with a decent accuracy. And, uh, and and you could see, man, you know, it's – it's. I mean, the, the summer for the 76ers has been interesting because it's, it's, it's built momentum from the end of the regular season – um, to where they are now, you know, getting ready to go to training camp. And he was one of those guys. I mean, he, you know, you mentioned those games that he had, the double-double, uh, that pat, the game where he had that great pass from the corner, which was one of the highlights for that team all year long. And he's a guy who, you know, when, when, when Summer League arrives, he wasted no time in announcing himself, wasted none. And, and, and it, those, are, those are kind of things that you look for when you talk about the development of a player. And that's what I see in him. Um, and I see a guy who, because of the way it's it's a deeper roster, he's going to be able to guy. He'll be able to fit and pick his spots. And part of that is, you know, they're going to want him to, you know, he'll probably be a, a, a decent part of their small ball 
the small ball attack when they go to it. You know, you you know how Nick Nurse is, man. He's not scared to put guys in there. And he's going to look down there and, you know, hey, Ricky, get in there and do your thing. So, um, and again, I, I just liked his, tra- I like his trajectory. I like where he's headed right now. Um, and it's, 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 it's a reason to be optimistic about his role. We don't know a lot about it, and we're not going to force him into the forefront real quickly. But, I mean, you can see, you know, that, you know, B-Ball Paul was right, was was the guy I kind of had a fetish for in terms of development. Now, my my developmental fetish is with Ricky Council. If that makes yeah. sense, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, we'll see what they uh, what he can do, and and I really like him. You know, I, I really do. And you know, the thing is though, when we get back, there's another guy that I want to talk about, and that guy is Eric Gordon. You know, he's an older guy. You know, they bring yeah. him in for leadership and shooting. And he's another one that I really, truly want to see how he works out and pans out. And we'll talk about him when we get back from this live read. Okay. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. But we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. And with a YouTube base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market games, all those ball games. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. So just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book. So, like, as we said before the live read, you know, Eric Gordon is a guy that I'm really intrigued by. You know, Mm -hmm. Ricky Council's number one, and then Eric Gordon, number two. And the thing about Eric Gordon, he's a guy, 6'3", 215 pounds, right? Um, I remember (laughs) going way back in the day. um, In 2007, he was the third-ranked guy in the class of 2000. And seven, and he went to North Central High School in Indianapolis. And the reason why I remember him so much is because he went up against Michael Jordan's sons. And dude, he ate them boy, he ate those young men alive. It was crazy. It was like and Michael Jordan Jordan was in the arena, huh? Was that Marcus Jordan? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, he ate them up, man. He ate them both up. So he was balling, and the game was on ESPN. Um Jordan was in there and they were calling him Air Gordon <laughs> right at the end of the game. Like the the uh the the fans. It was at you know at his high school. But you know, a year later, you know, he went to Indiana and a year later he was the seventh overall pick by the Los Angeles Clippers. Now he played in 886 career games, averaging 15.7 points shooting 81% from the foul line, right? And mm-hmm. shooting 37.1% from three over 16 seasons. Last season, you know, last season he averaged 11 points, which when you look at that was one of his, that's his lowest total of his career, right? He mm-hmm. averaged, well, it tied the lowest total of his career because before that, he went back to the Clippers last, the year before that, and he averaged 11, but he shot 37.8%. Now, this is coming after he shot 42.3% uh, the year prior with the Clippers. So, you know, his offensive production has been sort of on a decline, right? Yeah. You look, he shot overall from the field, he shot 44.3%. You know, which isn't all that bad, right? Um, but but at the same time, like because he shoots a lot of threes and and this and that. But you know, you look at it and you wonder how much does he have left in the tank? You know, how much does he have left in the tank? And was it just a bad situation for him out there in Phoenix? Now, again, when we look at this guy, they're not looking at him as a starter. They're right. looking at somebody to come off the bench 
and and give you some spot minutes, someone who could knock down a three, someone who could do stuff now, you know, and I think that he could have a nice role doing it. Yeah, and and you know, I mean, he's a guy. He, he's he's an athletic and durable guy. Even even at his advanced age, I mean, if you look at it, last year, you know, he appeared, he appeared in what almost seventy games, sixty eight games, and because you know they had all those injury problems out in Phoenix, and, you know, he, he gave him twenty four starts, um, and he's a guy who's mostly been a starter throughout his career. You know, up until his days in Houston, that was a good 13 years into his career. You know, so um, I, I think he's a veteran. He'll know how and when to, to pick his spots. Um, and, 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 and Nick Nurse will know how to use him. Um, I mean, he's a guy who, you know, every now, you know, I, I think he'll still every now and then he'll be able to get it going. Um, but he's, he's kind of a body when you when you look down down your bench you like to see a guy like that um a guy who's you know he's grizzled and you know they've got nick nurse got a bunch of grizzled faces to look at between you know the guards kyle lowry and reggie jackson um so i i I think you know he's a guy who can get his 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 jump shot will fall on for for him on certain nights so i think you know it's it's, and and again it all boils back to the health of the guys who at the front lines they've got to stay healthy and if they can stay healthy, a guy like him who you can plug and play in certain spots is going to be really good for the 76ers. I'm, I'm a, I've always been an Eric Gordon fan. I didn't get a chance to see him dismantle Marcus Jordan like you did, Keith, but I've always been a fan of his, man. Oh, you know? just calling him Eric Gordon. He was killing him. He was killing him. And Mike was in there watching it, too. Like, yeah. Yeah, I was with his, yeah, he was he was, he was was destroying him. Now, here's another guy that I, like, the, the guy that, I'm going to just talk briefly about it's two of them. Mm -hmm. You know, one of them is um, Jared McCann, Mm -hmm. um, the the, the rookie Mm -hmm. um, who was a point guard, but played two guard in college last year. I think, you know, in the, in the, in the ideal world, you don't play him a lot. Right. You know, and the reason being is because that means that the veteran guys that you have are doing what they supposed to do. Right. Right. And minutes are going to be tough for him to get by. Now he can come in and and and, and stretch the floor a little bit and and do certain things. But you know when you go out there and you just got all these veterans, the thing is he'll play some, but it's kind of like you don't really need him. But I, I look at him as the two spot. Another guy is a guy I think that we'll talk about tomorrow a little bit. And, and that's K.J. Martin. K.J. Martin is listed as a small forward. But when he was in um, Houston, you know, he was basically the powerful. Like, he was a guy running up and down the floor. The same thing last year. When he came in, you know, he basically was an undersized power forward, you know, doing the nitty-gritty. And now there was times when they would play positionless basketball and he would do some great things for them. But – the reason why we're not really talking too much about him is because you think about it when they signed him, signed him again, the thought was process was the four. Now they have Yubusele. So now they have him and, and Yubusele. So they have two of them, but I look at him more as an undersized four. So that's the reason why we didn't go too much in depth. Justin Edwards, the third guy, young guy, He's on a two-way contract. You know, he has long length, 6'8". You know, the guy could play. But, again, he's a dude that, and if you know anything about Nick Nurse, for the most part, he did play some two-way guys, but he played them when they when MB was injured, other guys was injured, and he right. needed bodies. Right about now, I don't think that he'll need the bodies so I don't really see Justin Edwards getting that type of burn. Yeah, and and, and quite has kept Justin. I mean, he's the guy. If you ask me, I would have, would have liked to see him stay another year in college. But I get coming out when it gets good, you know. Um, and it just it, it just it just didn't pan out for him in Kentucky the way we would have thought. So you know, hopefully he'll develop in that you know at a, at a, at a level down, but. You know, one guy I, I, you did touch on that I'm really curious to see is uh, 
you know, Jared McCain didn't didn't shoot the ball well in summer league. The one thing we were told that he could do, you know, it, 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 he can spread the floor. And we saw him do it at Duke. You know, we know that he can do it, but he's going to have to do it. And, and that's that's where he'll get his minutes from. You know, if he can uh, if he can spread the floor, you we will see him get some minutes. I mean, it's, it's they're just asking him to shoot the ball. And, uh, and and that'll be an expectation for him, you know. It's just, you know, it, you know, he's, we know he plays some point guard at the high school level, but he's going to be purely a floor spreader here at this level. And uh, yeah. it'll be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. But we want to thank you all again for making Locked On 76ers your first listen today. Now for your second listen, go find Locked On NBA where the local experts Keep you updated daily on all the biggest storylines of the season. Find Locked On NBA on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. For this is Keith for my man Mitch. We want to say thanks for listening and have a blessed day. And know tomorrow we're going to talk about the small power forward position. What I mean by small is small <laughs> in numbers. Yeah, small in yeah. numbers. So we'll talk yeah. about that tomorrow when we get back with y'all. Deuces. Have a great one, y'all.